This is Carl with National RV Detroit, and I'm going to walk you through your Flagstaff E Pro model 19 FBS. All right, so I'm here on the door side of the trailer at the rear, and as you can see, you got regular crank down stabilizers, they work with the, the crank that comes with it, or a three quarter inch socket on a drill. You have steps that fold into the trailer, they're very sturdy and stable. If you ever have to adjust the legs on them for the terrain, you just pull this pin here. There's one on each side and you can slide the legs up and down. Okay, you got power on the outside, obviously a, an outside, um, or excuse me, a power awning with the LED strip. Uh, keep in mind, this is the vet for the range hood. If you see here, it has a baffle that you can open up so it flaps freely, right? If you're gonna vent the trailer, uh, through the range hood. Make sure you open that up so it flaps freely, otherwise you keep it shut. You have speakers outside, a speaker outside. Um, this is your hitch. It's a Husky centerline weight distribution hitch with built-in sway control. We'll show you how this works when you pick up your trailer. Now if you, uh, if you have to refresh your memory, go to their website, Husky Centerline, and you can watch their hitch up video also. This is just in case you wanted to add a solar panel to charge the battery. That's where you would plug it in. This also obviously already has solar panels on the roof. We'll go into that very in a minute. All right. Um, okay. Right here is you hang your grill. In this case, you've got a griddle. You'll hang it here. Plus, there's a utility table you can put next to it. I just need to show you that you have to connect the LP hose for the griddle or grill whichever you're using. It, uh, it connects right here, so obviously um, this is off like that. You would plug it in here and then turn the valve to the on position. Okay? It comes with the hose, of course, everything you need to hook it up. You, uh, this is a, a power tongue jack, okay? Now, the thing to know about the power tongue jack is if you pull this this um, piece out here you can crank it manually but because of this type of bike rack that's on it you're gonna have to remove it first or use a socket with a ratchet wrench that's the way to go a deep well socket three-quarter inch uh, so it, it'd be good to carry that with you just for an emergency you can pull that out and you can just squeak it in there hopefully um, the other way you could do it is if you pull the, this section off this comes right off here it's just got a a pin holding it on you can see then if you used a socket with an extension or even your your wrench for your um, stabilizer jacks that'll fit it also so you could she could should be able to go straight down that way but while we're at the speaking of the bike rack now this is not this is a factory assembled so keep in mind every other thing here is going to be reversed to the other side because you're going to you're going to hang a bike on each side, so keep in mind half of these will, on both these, these antlers sticking up will be facing the other way when you decide how you do it. Also, you get a, a, an adapter for this piece right here that puts it back on an angle. Let me back up so you can see it. Puts it on an angle this way or this way, whichever way you want to do it. Uh, let me see where it's at so I can just show you. It's probably all the way back there somewhere. Well. I'll have to get, get with you on that because I'm not sure exactly it's in here somewhere. But the bottom line is you can, if you have to adjust it away from your tow vehicle for some reason or whatever, you can do it with that attachment. All right, you've got two uh, LP tanks with an automatic changeover regulator. Uh, this is two deep cycle marine batteries. They're 12 volts and they're wired together as 12 volts so you have doubled your storage capacity. You really have to have two batteries when you invert power. so. This inverts power, plus it'll store the solar power. Um, so, yes, you got to have two. Now, you can barely see it back there, but if you can see this red key here, that is the kill switch for your battery. You can shut the batteries off, but keep in mind, you always want them on except when you put it in storage. That's the bottom line. Okay, so this is your crank I told you about. This is the LP hose here, this hose right here, the quick connect hose. This is a rack. And this is your griddle, so that hangs on the side of the trailer. The thing behind it is the table I told you about, the utility table, okay? Alrighty, so, um, they've, 
Yeah, see, I did not prep this trailer, so let me see here. So you have city water connection here. This is the most common way to get water to the trailer. You're just going to hook up your hose, turn on, you're ready to go. Now, if you go to a campsite that does not have plumbing on the campsite, uh, you can pre-fill your fresh water tank right here. you got an onboard, onboard tank, and you can use the pump. There's a 12-volt pump that will pump it for you. So even if you don't have city water hookup, you're, you're more rustic. You can, you can use this feature and still operate everything as though there were city water. This here is to draw antifreeze into the system. It has to do with winterizing. It's something you'll have to educate yourself a bit about. Um, if you pull this panel, somebody it still hasn't been put back into place because they just had it open to winter or to water test it. Um, but that's where you would adjust the, the valves on the back of your water heater, which you have to bypass the water heater if you when you put antifreeze in because you can't get it in the water heater tank. It'll leave a foul taste and a bad smell. So. Uh, you have to bypass the water here. That's something if you don't know, you'll have to educate yourself about a bit. Um, so remember, you always got to bypass your water heater. And you would draw the antifreeze through here. You make up a hose. It has to go down to the ground, so it'll go right into the, a gallon of antifreeze down there. And when you turn on the water pump, it'll draw the antifreeze in. There is a valve you have to select that will let the water pump either draw from this hose here or from the demand tank for your fresh water. Normally you're going to have it to drawing from your fresh water, but just for winterization, winterization you'll have to switch that valve. Okay, it's very simple. And if you already have camping experience, it's even more simple. All right, this is an outside shower. That is your power cord, obviously, 30 feet long and 30 amp. All right, now, this is where you dump your trailer. This one over here, this valve over here is your gray tank valve. Gray tank is sink and shower water. This one here is your black tank valve. Black tank or black water is toilet water and waste. So you're going to put your hose on here, put the other end of the dump station. You'll dump the black first. I'm going to close it right now. But you dump the black first. Um, then when it dumps, you dump the gray second just because it's cleaner water. But after you've done that, you can leave your black valve open, come up here, hook your hose here at the dump station. Like it says on this little sticker here, always make sure that the valve's open. Then you turn on the water and it'll, it'll spray the inside of your black tank and clean it out really good, clean the sensors off really good. So um, that's, I highly recommend using the, the um, black tank flush every time you dump. All right, you've got a ladder to access the roof, which is good. Um, it's all sealed up nice and tight. We've inspected it, but you want to go up there three times a season, once in the spring, once in the fall, once in the middle of the summer, look at all the sealant on the roof. Once, someday, sometime, off in the future, you don't know when, that's why you inspect. You're going to have some separation starting, it's generally at a corner area or around a skylight, but not always. But you'll see that it needs to be touched up and you have it taken care of immediately. The thing is, you got to inspect it just to, just to protect your investment and, and uh, your trailer. It's, uh, it's a simple, simple thing. It'll take you 20 minutes. You already got the ladder hooked up, so you don't have to drag your ladder out there. So I'll go out there three times a season, spring, fall, and middle of summer, and make sure everything is good on your roof, okay? Also, that, that housing there tells us this is pre-wired for a backup camera. So if you want to add a backup camera, make sure you get a Furion camera that fits that housing, okay? That's just the service panel for your refrigerator right there. Okay, so let's go inside. Okay, this is some stuff you get on this on the bed here. Okay, so the refrigerator. The refrigerator is a gas absorption refrigerator. That means it'll it'll work on LP gas as well as regular electricity. Alright. So um, right now I just turned it on and it's on auto. Auto is what you want. Auto means electric. The reason they call it auto is because if you if you have a power failure, it'll automatically switch over to gas, or when you just when you plug it in, it'll always look for electricity first. That takes parameters, so it always looks for 110 AC, and if it can't find it, it'll switch over to LP gas. Um, also, if you just want to dedicate it to gas pulling down the road, you can do it that way. Um, but generally speaking, you're going to have it on auto. And the other thing to know about this refrigerator is this device here is called a thermistor. It's how you set the temperature. The higher you go with it, just on the end of this this um, uh, wire down here. The higher you go with it, the cooler it is in the refrigerator. You want to keep it up as far as it'll go almost always. If, if, if it starts to frost up and you're having some problems, then you can back it down. But just as a rule, you keep it up all the way. The microwave works like any other microwave. 
This device down here is your power converter. It converts 110 AC to 12 volt DC. So this is a converter. So we start off with 110 AC. You got regular houses, whole, whole, excuse me, household type circuit breakers here. Um, then you convert the power to 12 volt DC over here, and you've got regular 12 volt fuses. Uh, they're all labeled. Both the breakers and the fuses are labeled. Now, if this uh, was these fuses were to blow, they'll actually light up, and you can see them glowing through this perforation here. Okay, so keep that in mind. So this converts 110 AC to 12 volt DC. Also keep in mind, as long as you're plugged into power, it's a, it's a battery charger. It'll keep your battery charged. All right, this here is your um, LP and carbon monoxide detector. So it should always be green. If not, you get it serviced. Self-test. Oops. Oops, I just screwed up there. There we go. So that's uh, one for LP, the next one's carbon monoxide, right there, back to green. So if it goes off, obviously, you uh, take everybody outside, shut the gas off at the front, and then figure out what's going on. All right, so this is your panel. Uh, your awning, it's very simple. You just let it go out. You roll it out eight feet. Uh, you'll see the awning tube when it gets all the way out. That's how you'll know that it's all the way out. Never leave it out unattended if you're not going to be at the campsite, um, you roll it in, otherwise it can get damaged by the wind very quickly. Your slide is right here. It'll spray it part way in for you. You can, you can mess with it when you come to pick up the trailer. All right. Um, you know, these are just lights here. These are your, your tank levels. So your battery-wise, you're charged. Always charge, check when you're not plugged in, though. Fresh water has a third in there. That's because we're just finishing up water testing it. Black tank, empty. Gray tank, empty. So, uh, keep in mind it'll graduate up in one-third increments as it fills. And these LEDs will light up. Once you get past two-thirds, you've got to think of the black and the gray tank. You're going to have to start thinking about dumping them. Okay? All right. Um, so, I told you you had an onboard water pump, which will use to pump water out of your fresh water tank when you don't have city water at the campsite. You turn that on here. You'll also use that for winterizing the trailer. You can let your water heater on gas or electric. Always make sure there's water in the tank before you, before you turn on any, any heat source. So you can't run it dry. It has to have water. So always make sure that if you've emptied it, uh, drained it just to, you know, to change out the water when you have it in storage or something like that, you refill it. Okay? That's the control panel. This thing is something you can mess with. It, uh, it's, it's, it senses your tire pressure and temperature of your, the bearing area, backing plate bearing area of your wheel. Um, you have to set it up for each individual vehicle. It can, you can see all these are wheels here. <laughs> so you could set it up to a, to a, um, a tractor trailer if, if you want. In this case, you're using a travel trailer. Our, the sensors on your wheels are inside the wheel or inside the tire attached to the outside of the wheel, I guess you would say. So it's inside the tire and is directly opposite the, the, um, the air valve. So um, you look at the air valve and you go straight across, at the, the diameter straight across, or the, what is that? Is that the radius? Guys, I can't even remember anymore. No, diameter. And so straight across from it will be the, where the sensor is. So when you're programming this, you'll put it close to that area so you get the right tire. You could also these, have, these wheels have built-in sensors, but if you want to add your tow vehicle to it, which you can do, you'd have to buy, yeah, yeah, go to their website and look around, uh, but I, I'm, I know they sell like a cap that's also a transmitter that'll, that'll give you tire pressure. All right, so keep that in mind. Some people use it, some people don't. It's up to you. This is just a, a heater or a, a controller for your, for your mattress. You can plug it in at the end of your mattress and then into the 110 and set temperature. All right. Now I told you about the converter over here. It converts AC to DC power. This here is the inverter. This goes the other way. It converts DC power um, to AC power. So only one plug in this trailer will be wired to the inverter. It's inefficient compared to converting. So you actually, it's kind of a, I don't know if I want to use the term lossy, but it's, it's, not, a, it's not a one to one conversion from AC to DC. 
inversion from DC, AC to DC. So you turn it on right now and it'll start inverting power. So it's taking the 12 volt from your battery and it's sending it to a plug, which I'm sure on this one is right here. I haven't tested it, but, but it's gonna be this one. So only certain things are hooked up to the inverter. That's my point is. You can't run the whole trailer that way. It's just not feasible at this point in time. Um, also, let's see here. Where are we? This is a neat thing. This is your your sort of a control panel for. Let me get some light in here. Hold on. Oh, I guess. I guess I did already. Okay, so that's what we've got. Um, so right now, you've got your your batteries are wired together to 12 volts, right? Just double the storage capacity. So we you can't you can't check A and B battery. It's just B because the way we wire it, we wire it together. Um, um, so you can you can see right here that right now from the sun to the solar panel we're just getting 0.3. We're in the shade on the side of the building, but 0.3 amps is what the battery is receiving from the solar panels. Um, if you go like that, your batteries are charged completely, um, five amp hours, and you, they are actually charged up to 13.7 volts, which is perfect. Um, the thing most people seem to be interested in is is this one here they show the sun going towards the solar panel tells you what your what your solar panels are collecting and storing in your battery okay you can also charge a USB there if you need to alright I'm going to change this because it says you got an AGM battery which is gel and you don't you, we, we generally use flooded so I'm just going to hold that right there till it flashes then I'm going to go to flooded And do it again okay so now it's set correctly um, that's the only thing you have to manually change with the system everything else is automatic all right so your radio um, it I'll pull this off for you and put it on your thing here okay so you have a remote for it right here and you can stream off this uh, USB take all your favorite albums with you on one little stick you can go into the system through this HDMI. You can also patch it from behind if you're if you're the type of person who, who likes to, you know, customize things. Um, you can hook up wirelessly with Bluetooth for, with your phone or tablet and stream from that. Um, you have two speaker zones, one and two. One is the inside speakers, two are the outside speakers. So it does a lot uh, considering your camping. Um, your TV itself has a disc player built into it. You can see that over there. Um, this is, I'm just going to move the camera for a second because I've got to pull it away from the wall. It's on a swing out bracket. I'll show you now. See, oh, let me get over this way. Alright, so you can see it's got a swing out bracket. Um, this here is your Wi Fi Ranger. Right, I'm going to turn it on and warm it up a bit. Your TV is a 12 volt TV. Keep that in mind, this green light. Is the signal boot shows you the signal booster for the digital antenna is on? I could shut it off, but you won't get a good picture over the air. You always want it on like that. This bracket locks into place, as you can see, and um, the rest is pretty self evident. But so I'm going to try and get a picture of this tag here for your Wi Fi Ranger. All right, the Wi Fi Ranger is on the roof, it has two functions. The main function that people use is a, a signal booster for public Wi Fi. So, what you'll do is you'll look on your device for Sky 4 LTE 2994, it looks like from here. Um, that's you, right? That's your Wi Fi Ranger. So you'll hook all your devices up to this, right? And when, um, when every time you pull into a campground or pre Wi Fi, it'll automatically hitch up to your Wi Fi Ranger, all your devices, I mean. So keep in mind, um, if you go to this IP address here on the bottom, you'll see what the Wi-Fi Ranger sees, right? So then you could pick the public Wi-Fi from the list that it'll display. And if the campground gives you a, a, a password, pumps in the password, otherwise just just hook up to it. Um, it's a really great signal booster. Um, you have a temporary password of change me now 9294, which you'll you'll obviously change it to something that's everybody can remember. Um, so it's a really good thing and it boosts the signal really well. It's got a built-in firewall I'm told. Um, now it has a second feature that's between you and your phone provider. Uh, you would have to get a SIM card type deal where you uh, you have to pay a monthly fee just like a phone, and you could actually have 4G um, from your trailer. 
most people don't do that unless they work from the trailer that sort of thing have to be in, in contact uh, uh, so uh, most people just use the public Wi-Fi which is free but like I said if you want to if you want to use the other feature you can um, get more details from Wi-Fi Ranger but you're gonna like I said you have to go through your your phone provider I'm told to, to get that hooked up okay all right that's good so we're making progress here your air conditioner has the controls right on the air conditioner of course your thermostat for your furnace is just a little analog thermostat you're just going to kick it on like that you hear it kicked on all right so um, it'll light automatically when you shut it off you want to go all the way over until it clicks there'll be a lag time before it shuts off as soon as I did that the flame went out but it'll still purge itself for a, a minute or two gotta pick up the pace here okay so the uh, you go to light and then you spark it that's all you do that's how you light the burners just like I did it I'll do it one more time so you can see light spark okay so you got three burners three knobs the oven is a little different there's a pilot light back here at the bottom all the way to the back there's a pilot light um, what you'll do is you'll come up to the oven knob you go to pilot right right there I don't know if you can see it but it says pilot you'll depress it and hold it and you'll continue to hold it then you're gonna spark it right here until the pilot light down here lights once the pilot light lights you're still holding this in you hold it for another 10 seconds or so to heat it up then you go to operating temperature it cycles on and off like an oven does but when you shut it off, obviously the flame goes off, but so does the pilot light. So you have to relight the pilot light each time you uh, start the oven. You want to use the oven. All right. So I mentioned to you, I know I did, but I, the inverter is off right now. You push that button to turn it on and off. You don't want to just always invert power because it's going to be sucking bat, uh, power storage from your batteries. And if you don't need it, you don't need to be doing that. So keep that in mind. This couch jackknife's flat you just pull it from the bottom here and it turns into a bed you have a table here that you can set up and down as needed um, this is your antenna it just rotates it doesn't go up and down like they used to it's a digital antenna though it's it's a good one um, you have stuff in here uh, you can on this particular trailer you can use a water filter which is which will be in that compartment the, the front off door side compartment next to the water heaters you take out those screws and you can access the everything all the valves and everything behind the water heater um, and next to the water heater that's you'll find a filter canister this wrench slides up on it you can spin it off and if you choose to you can use this carbon block filter which does sediment and a lot of uh, uh, chemicals uh, chlorine and the chlorine smell that you get from some water and, and that sort of thing so it, it it's uh, it's not reverse osmosis or anything like that, but it still does a good job cleaning it up. All right, so you'd have to change that every season if you used it. Uh, throw it out before you winterize and put a new one in after you winterize in the fall. You get a spatula. You can hang a toilet paper roll. Most people don't because you're going into uh, three sixteenths paneling, and there's a, there are aluminum and studs in the wall. But hitting one and having the roll hanging in the right spot are two different things. Most people just use a stand. So. We don't install it, neither is the factory, it's up to you, okay? All righty, I think we've pretty much gone through everything but the bathroom. Let me look around real quick. That's the vent range. Remember I told you about opening the baffle when you, when you use the fan. All right, so you've got a really nice four-speed fan. The roof has to be open to operate it. You pull this down to unlatch it. There's no reason to latch it. It's just a feature that it has. It's not going to blow open or anything, but you can open this up. It's got a cover over it so you can open it in the rain. Um, oh, wait a minute, I got my switch here. There we go. So, so you always want to run this at least on low when you're using the shower because you want to pull the humidity out. These things are built super tight these days, so keep that in mind. Um, and there's four speeds. Now your your shower. The only thing to know, this is a shower miser, right? This is just nothing but a water recirculator. So if you're in a drought area, like in California, let's say, it keeps you from wasting water while you're heating up the hot water, or you're waiting to purge the lines of the cold water so you get hot water coming out of your shower head, for example. So it'll just recirculate it around and around and around. It doesn't use new water, and it doesn't dump old water into your gray tank. So you're saving space in your gray tank, plus you're saving water. Um, 
So to recirculate, you're doing this. Then after this changes to a deeper, brighter blue, that's too contradictory, this contradictory statement, but you'll know it when you see it. Um, you, that's telling you it's hot, then you'll go to normal shower mode with it. Okay, so it's a water recirculator. You can always um, go to Water uh, Miser, and uh, they got good videos and a lot of tons of stuff on their website. Every everything in here, you have an, a you have a, a a packet that has a a, a, um, a small manual on everything uh, individually, but you can also go to their website to look at their manufacturer's video. Okay, this is GFCI. All the plugs are wired through this GFCI. So if you have a if you're using a coffee pot outside and it pops, you're always going to reset it here because they're all wired through this. All right, the toilet. First of all, it's ceramic, which is good. It's not the cheap plastic one. Um, we can actually use water here because I've got some in the tank until I dump it. So the thing to know about the toilet is you have to have water. First of all, your black tank is directly below. Right? That's your black tank down there. So. Um, you can't run it without chemical and without a little bit of water to start off with. So when you, you pull into the campsite, you hook up your water and your power. Then you're going to come in here and you're going to take your chemical, whichever brand you use. You'll put one dose in there, put it right in there. Then you'll step on the flush pedal here, right? And water will swirl around. And you're going to continue to stand on this until you put about a gallon or so of water in the tank. There's no way to tell what that is. You just have to get used to doing it and get, use some common sense. It doesn't have to be perfect it doesn't have to be exactly one or two gallons it just has to be some water uh, around a gallon or two that uh, and chemical so that's the thing always when you first start using it your black tank is empty you put some water and chemical in it very important also you notice when you when you flush it it defaults to this much water well you can just step on the pedal a little bit and it turns on the, the valve but leaves the trap um, um, closed so you can fill it up as high as you want before you use it, okay? You gotta do that each time. All right, I think we've got it now. Okay. Let me look around. Yes, we have it. This is it. Okay, so thanks very much for buying your trailer here at National RV Detroit. You have issues, problems, you call us. We'll, t we'll help you. We can talk you through it sometimes. Sometimes you have to make service appointments, whatever, but we'll take care of you. Um, just remember what I said about inspecting the roof. That's not this trailer. It's every trailer ever built. If you own a trailer, you have to inspect the roof regularly. That's just the way it is. Um, also, you want to learn about winterizing if you don't already know. And you have to, like I said, you have to bypass the black or the, uh, excuse me, bypass the fresh water tank on the back of the water heater before you pump antifreeze in it, things like that. So, okay, thank you very much.